Women have held positions of power and influence for millennia. From around 3000 BC, when the first Egyptian queens ruled their lands, history has seen many women luminaries and leaders. From Queen Cleopatra to Queen Elizabeth, from Florence Nightingale to Jackie Onassis, from Golda Meir to Oprah Winfrey, women have influenced history, art, politics and business. Sri Lanka too made history by being the first country to elect a female head of state when in 1960 Sirimavo Bandaranaike was elected prime minister. In the present too, women have been an integral part of shaping the landscape of art, history, business and politics. With Power Women, we hope to show you a glimpse into the lives of these incredible women who are at the top of their field today. Women have held positions of power for thousands of years. Both behind the scenes and in the forefront of recorded history, many women have been leaders and pioneers in their chosen spheres, often defying social conventions and shunning the prevalent trends. In fields as diverse as science, politics, literature, entertainment, human rights and sports, women have taken on the male-dominated establishment, sometimes to world-altering results, that resonate in day-to-day -day life today. History echoes with the great achievements of its women of power, be they in seats of power, making inroads into science and literature, or simply fighting for the rights of others. In doing so, they have inspired and paved the way for many followers. Even today, in a still male-dominated world, we see women ascending to the highest in their chosen fields, proving to be a beacon of light to the thousands who aspire after them. Because I know women do find it hard, you know, I've, I've seen women struggle. Yes. Uh, and because our, our society is unfortunately not geared for women. I, I don't think it's really our society, I think all over the world, you know, it, it, it is like that. So, uh, women do find it harder. With ETV Power Women, we hope to furnish a glimpse into what today's women of influence are like, both in their very public and professional personas, as well as in their more personal moments. My greatest thrill and my greatest excitement of, of is giving people, is, is creating things and creating something different and creating something new. And, and that's why you always see different things in Odell, is, you know, because I keep thinking of new things and, and everyone around me now keeps thinking of new things and new ideas uh, and it's really what we enjoy doing, you know, things that are new and different and, uh, and hopefully inspiring to others um, and, you know, something that makes a difference. I would call myself, a self, or categorize myself as an artist architect because uh, painting, sculpture, pottery, and my photography was the prelude to architecture. So I think I err uh, more on the artistry and creativity more than the commercial part of architecture. The main thing is that I enjoy what I do. I think that's really what really you know drives me, and that was that's what really um, makes me get up every day and enjoy and uh, you know live my life to the fullest and also you know working with a lot of people um, we have a lot of good people um, you know both at Odell and, and the customers and I mean all that is part of the inspiration that keeps keeps me going and keeps uh, and keeps Odell going really. ETV Power Women also focuses on strong personalities who have through sheer hard work unbending focus and steely determination risen right to the top. Definition of a power woman I think is different to everybody, to each and every woman and each and every person. Um, I don't necessarily see myself as a power woman as such, but, uh, but you know, if, it's, if it inspires certain people and, um, you know, then I'm happy to have the title. <laughs> I think there are classic few things we can do as women. Uh, one is having basic good education. Uh, good communication skills. I think, uh, you know, we interview people in the bank regularly and I take a young girl and a young boy for an interview. 
often I find the, the lady would girl would already know about 70-80% of the job before she even applies. So actually she's too qualified for the job before she even applies. Often I find uh, the guys would know 40 to 50-60% quite confident, often might not even know the job particularly well. He would say, you know, I'm willing to learn, teach me and whatever I think. So women, we tend to not push ourselves, uh, extend ourselves beyond our sort of comfort zones. Uh, after we get the job, I find we don't network enough. I think we could network much better. Uh, maybe it's our culture, because if a woman is more forthright, or she's aggressive, or she's coming on, or she's uh, whatever. So they don't, we don't tend to network enough. And I found on a personal level that uh, early on in my career, I, I, I tended to network. I used to force myself at every single function to you know, get to know two new people. Uh, every time I got into the elevator in, in my bank, uh, I was working in Germany for a short while and uh, I used to have my elevator speech of 10 seconds when I meet a senior person that I would impress upon him or her as to who I was. And So I think we need to understand body language better. Uh, we need to, uh, I mean, we have constraints, but I think we can beat the system in terms of doing basic things, even maternity leave we spoke about. But maternity leave too, I mean, I've also delivered two children and worked right throughout, is that, you know, people take maternity leave, they vanish for five months and they turn up at work. Uh, you know, if you're serious about your career, I think that uh, while you're doing a maternity leave, keep in touch with your boss, keep in touch with your colleagues, keep in touch with your customers, whatever your job you're doing. and. Actually, I did that right throughout with both kids where, you know, on Saturdays I had to come to work, sneak into my emails, read everything, go through the files and see what m my colleague had done for my, for my customers. So, you know, don't lose touch because regularly I find some of my colleagues, they would turn up five months later like somebody has appeared from Mars to work who has completely lost touch of uh, the job. Not only are we going to have an in-depth interview, um, touching on the professional lives, the achievements and the success of these remarkable women. We're also going to talk to them about their personal lives, to get to the core of what really makes them tick, to find out more about their personality, what they like doing, you know, so we get a complete idea of who this woman is. Um, we've also got something that we like to call the dreaded 10, which is a quick fire, rapid question round where they just have to answer these questions off the cuff, no time to think about it, so we get the absolute truth. And I know that this is going to make for fascinating watching. I don't know about luck, but I had to work my way through. I, I never, it was not a bed of roses. And I think a lot of people would think, because I was born into this environment, that it was a bed of roses. I don't think so at all. I really worked myself. I mean, there were circumstances that I had to uh, you know, that made me work my way through. First of all, I'm a mother, I'm a businesswoman, I'm, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, I, whatever I am that day, I keep changing, I guess. I think that's part of being who you are. You keep changing and adapting to, to, to each day and each situation and, and uh, whatever the moment requires. Uh, I don't think you need to, to set yourself in certain stereotype that, uh, that restricts you and um, doesn't let you um, um, be, be as much as you should be. Well, I, I feel if you're especially a career woman, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I personally felt a lot of guilt, for example, when I had my child. Um, having to, be, especially the field that I'm in, it involves a lot of after office hours. It's not just a typical eight to five, nine to five job. So, uh, it, it, I mean, there's a lot of traveling overseas, there's a lot of entertaining uh, weekends and after office. Uh, so, therefore, a lot of time is needed. And so, when you have to leave a young child at home and go for that, it's, it's a hell of a guilt thing. I think that's, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's also a more female thing. Um, so I had to cope with that. And I'm sure a lot of females will uh, have to cope with that because that may be a biological or emotional thing. I don't know what it is. So I think that's going to be tough for a woman, which is why I think a lot of women give up uh, their careers when they have kids. I think you have to face reality. You, know, you have to understand that you're in a, in a country 
you know, we have to understand the country and its environment and its political setup and work within it. So, I mean, although everybody else thinks I'm great, I don't think I'm great. There are greater people than me. I always find, like even say you go to a, say a cocktail party and if yeah. you've been invited just by yourself, and as say as a businesswoman, yeah. and you get this group of males who are just, having this yeah. conversation, and you suddenly go in, and it, it just changes, you right. know? Yeah, <laughs> so it is really awkward, and you find they wouldn't talk about business, but they like to start commenting about your dress yeah. or you know some sort of very flimsy. We're very proud to have Pond's Age Miracle as our partner in bringing you this program on these incredible women. Uh, we have Otara Gunawardena, Nela de Souza, Shiromal Kure, and Kimali Fernando, uh, who will be joining us. Um, they've all sort of commented that they're very excited about the program, although I'm not sure how they feel about the dreaded 10, which means it will be fun to watch. Um, in fact, we have a representative of Pond who's going to tell us why she feels this program is going to have such an impact on Sri Lanka. ETV Power Women and Pons both talk about women, both talk about the powerful side of women. Uh, Pons has been in the globe for over 150 years and throughout the 150 years it has evolved and it has come into a certain place where every, every opportunity it takes it talks about the beauty of women, the romantic side of women, um, even the freedom of women. You know, it, it gives the opportunity for women to bring out the powerful side of them. ETV's Power Women is something uh, which, is a quite, which is a good opportunity for Pons because partnering with ETV's Power Women uh, gave Pons, will give Pons an opportunity to uh, bring out the brand promise, the brand promise of bringing out uh, romance, bringing out understanding of women uh, because um, ET, your, your program, Power Women, talk about uh, the powerful side of every woman. We are people not only in politics but in different fields, say business, arts, where they have actually evolved and come to a certain place where, uh, where men were dominating the industry and today women have come into a certain place. So the brand Pons, which also talks about the powerful side or whatever, uh, the, the motivational factor of women is a good opportunity to link up with Power Women. Well, you've caught a little glimpse of Power Women. It's given you a bit of taste of what the program's about. But there really is so much more than that. We really want to find out who these women are, what's driven them to succeed, how they became number one in their chosen field. And I think we've really got a good look at and we found out all of that for you. So I do hope that you'll join me every Monday on ETV at 8 p.m. starting from the 10th of August for Power Women. And if by some chance you miss it, you can always catch the repeat of the show on Saturdays at 9 p.m. Um, so I will see you then.